Morning YouTube. It's late winter, early spring, and the bees are starting to get out and about. Um, we've planted things around the land that come out in the early spring just for this reason. We have in the past lost hives to starvation, and that's definitely a risk right now. So in addition to open feeding and whatnot, we like to make sure there's some natural forage as early as possible. So we're going to take a look around the land and see what we've got and take it from there. So I've got my cup of coffee. So let's get this show on the road. This is the one of the wild plum trees. And let's see, the bees are working this right now. In fact, let's see if I can see she's she's working. She's got pollen on on her. This is why I like these guys, guys. It's March third, and this thing is covered up. These bees have got pollen on them. And they're going to town on this tree. We did have a little frost, like I said last night, but hopefully uh, it doesn't affect these. And I mean, let me see if I can get out of the light here. But this uh, this tree is just covered up with the honeybees. We're about I don't know a couple hundred feet away from one of the bee yards. Got more of these guys in the back. You can see they are just going at it. All kinds of other little flying critters too, but the honeybees, that's what, what we care about. They are going to town on it. In fact, here's a, if I can get whatever this little guy is. You can walk up to it. I don't know if you can hear it on that camera or not, but you can just hear the buzzing of them. Right up there, there's they are just everywhere, so this is a good thing. And here come the elderberries. They're starting to leaf out a little bit. This is our first uh, spring having elderberries. I'm curious to see when they start to flower. Um, this is a peach tree we put in last year. We actually got it at, on clearance at Lowe's. It was originally $24. I don't remember what we paid, it was nowhere near that. But you can see it is starting to flower and bud out, which is good because the original one doesn't look so hot, although it does have a little leaf coming out of there. So that's a good thing. And you can see the peach trees are just covered up with blooms. They've been out for about a week now. They're just now starting to leaf out. Um, this is good, it's covered up with them. I'll get tons of peaches on this. Hopefully, I actually get to keep them. Um, last year we got hit with a hard freeze and lost all of them. But you can see, we got this one and that one down there that are just full of blooms. And the same deal with the nectarines. They're just smack full of blooms as well. So we're hoping uh, we are done with frosts and freezes this year. The bees certainly hope so, because they enjoy a good snack. Here come the blueberries. These are just starting to bud out. We've got a few different varieties here. This one is leaked out a little bit farther ahead of the other one. Got flowers starting to open up. Same thing on this one. Flowers starting to open up. This is one of the later varieties. I don't remember the, the name of the variety. It's got buds at the tips just starting, but it's pretty far behind the others. That doesn't look like made it. Then this one. Same thing, the buds are just not starting to open up. 
kind of scary looking, but that's my daughter's first birdhouse that she built. You can see it's starting to kind of fall apart, but it has had birds in it. So her birdhouse building ability has improved greatly. And here come the red buds. Some of them around town are already out. <clears throat> Ours have always been a week or two later. Not sure why, but they're starting to come out now too. And well, the bees don't really like them very well, but my, my honey does. These are the daffodils that are starting to come out. They're just now starting to open up. Nothing to do with flowers, but here's pork chop. Say hey, pork chop. Hey, pork chop. Hey, pork chop. And these are the elderberry cuttings we took. They're starting to leaf out. We're gonna hope that they, uh, they root. Looks like all of the elderberry cuttings have leaves on them. These are, yeah, these are the there. These are the cherries, but the cherries aren't out yet anyway. So I'm not sure whether those have taken or not. And these are the figs. And here's that forsythia we rooted. Like I said, this stuff roots incredibly easily, y'all. Just cut it off. We stuck rooting hormone on there. A lot of folks say you don't even have to do that, but it took and you can see just about all of them we stuck in there. We've already taken a bunch of it out and planted it in the yard, but it's flowered up pretty well too. All right, I went on ahead and refilled the, the feeder only because, uh, like I said, last year I did lose a hive to starvation and call me paranoid if you want, but I prefer not to do that again. You can see I just flipped it over. By the way, see that wet spot? Make sure your lid is seated well before you do that. Otherwise you get a nice big wet spot like that. No big deal, the bees are gonna clean it up. You can see they're already taking care of it, but better to keep it in the feeder anyway. So they're already taking this in. You can see them drink, or drink I should say. And you can stand right up here next to them because they're more concerned about the feed than they are you so like I said it's an easy feeder to make and I may not have to feed them right now but I'm gonna err on the side of caution And this is what you call a robbing frenzy. This is that uh, hive that I was worried about. That, well, there were very few bees in it. And you can actually watch them. They're flying over from hives next door, flying into this one, and flying back. So, I guess at least the uh, resources aren't going to waste. They're going back into my other hives here, but they're going to town. I have very little activity coming out of that one right there. I'm going to have to peek in there and see. They're coming in and out, but not very fast. Not as fast as these guys here. So I'll have to check these out. So make sure they're doing okay there. Now, to be completely honest with you, we're not entirely sure what this is. We kind of got duped when we bought these. We have two of these. Um, we actually thought we were getting a peach tree, or a plum tree, rather. When we bought them, they were labeled plum trees. We have this one and that one down there. Um, this is obviously much more of a pear, but it doesn't really produce any fruit. It will produce, you can see it's got flowers all over it and whatnot and the bees will work these things like crazy but it produces these little bitty pears so we're not entirely sure what variety it is um my mother-in-law seems to think maybe it's a cleveland pear 
but I'm not entirely sure. So I'll take another video later when it's got the little fruit on there. Maybe some of y'all can help me out. All right, and this is the one of the wild plum trees. And let's see, bees are working this right now, in fact. She's she's working. She's got pollen on on her. This is why I like these guys, guys. It's March third, and this thing is covered up. These bees have got pollen on them, and they are going to town on this tree. We did have a little frost, like I said last night, but hopefully uh, it doesn't affect these. And I mean, let me see if I can get out of the light here. But this. Uh, this tree is just covered up with the honeybees. We're about, I don't know, a couple hundred feet away from one of the bee yards. Got more of these guys in the back. As you can see, they are just going at it. All kinds of other little flying critters too, but the honeybees, that's what, what we care about. They are going to town on it. In fact, here's a if I can get whatever this little guy is. You can walk up to it. I don't know if you can hear it on that camera or not. But you can just hear the buzzing of them. Right up there, there's... They are just everywhere. So this is a good thing. All right, guys. This is what we call a tulip tree. Um, not sure if that's the official scientific name for it, but that's what we call it. Um, you can see it is just about done. These flowers have only been here for about a week. And the bees will work these as well. They're not on there right now. It's getting kind of late in the afternoon. Um, but they do take up some, some resources from this. This is another one that comes out early in the, the spring, late winter. So when they're coming out of that point where some of the hives are starting to run low on, on food, so it's one of those things that comes out late winter, early spring, that they can get out and get if the weather warms up enough for them to, to get out flying. And here's another tulip tree. This one's still got more of its uh, blooms on it than the other one. This one's a good many years older though. But the bees and stuff, they'll, they'll come around here and they'll work it in the middle of the day. It's a pretty tree either way. So as you can see, there isn't a whole bunch of stuff out and flowering right now for the bees. So um, we did open feed as well because we don't want them to starve. But I figure every little bit of natural forage helps. Um, those wild plums just go crazy this time of year. And then, you know, some of the other stuff that, that we looked at. So anyway, that's kind of what we have going at the beginning of the beekeeping season. I'm hoping our bees make it to spring where we can start our, our split. So thanks for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, comment below if you have any questions. Y'all take care.